everybody is biggie again um this video is going to be about uh something a lot of people don't talk about um it's going to be about service cost and buying new versus buying uh used and factoring uh the service cost and sometimes you get a big surprise and sometimes it is worth it if you can do it to buy uh new especially if you're uninformed um, let me show you guys a couple things okay here's a couple watches in my <coughs> my watch collection this is a Lumatech this is um has a double barrel Russian um, military uh, movement in there it's very robust, doesn't need a lot of service. Uh, this is a Hamilton, and this has a Etta movement, which is a 7750 uh, Valjeau. It's a really rugged movement, robust movement, doesn't need a lot of service. If you do need to service it, it'll cost roughly 100 to 250 bucks. Anybody can service it. It has, um, you know, basic parts. It's not proprietary in any way. It's just an Etta movement. Now, here's my um, Omega Speedmaster. This has a, a Lamania movement. Now, to service this is five to seven hundred dollars. So keep in mind, I bought this new. I mean, well, I bought this watch used. It was fairly new. It's a newer year. So if you're going to buy something that incurs a high service cost, you might want to get a newer watch versus an older watch, especially if you don't have box and papers. So box and papers is really important because you can figure out when's the last time it was serviced and maybe uh, save yourself a lot of money because a Rolex is five to a thousand dollars a service. This is an Omega um, Speedmaster. I mean Seamaster and um, this is up for service this is going to cost me $250 just to service this piece so um, you have to always be cognizant when you're dealing with used stuff um, you know you might want to think about if you need to service it or if it doesn't have box and papers doesn't need servicing you might want to put that cost in the cost of the watch because the service this watch is about 250 or 500 dollars to put a new mainspring on um a, a whole lot of different things that they do when they service it um so you gotta understand that now this watch right here this is a solar watch seiko patriots limited edition this watch right here is going to be virtually um you basically aren't going to need to service this watch at all just about at any time um, it's atomic it, it checks itself uh, twice a day and calibrates itself so it's the most accurate watch I have because it's around off the atomic clock and it's a it's a quartz watch but it's um even more accurate than a, than a, your normal quartz or super quartz because it's an atomic watch and it's solar powered so um, it'll last about 20 or 20 some odd years and you don't need any service with it and you're done with it. You just either sell it or or just toss it, you know, relatively inexpensive and, you know, it's just something that is a lot of way to go for inexperienced watch collectors. Um, but if you're going to get something and you want a low service cost, I know Archie Luxury is against it, but you can get a Etta movements, Valjo movements, Unitas movements. They're readily available. Um, it's and they're easy, easy to uh, uh, service from anybody. They're not proprietary movement. Um, but when you're going with something like this that has a Lamania movement or you have a Rolex with an in-house movement or something. Um, just be cognizant that 
you need to check the service dates to see if it was serviced. Take it to a, a qualified technician and have them open it up and see what's going on in there. Maybe you can save yourself 500 to to $1,000 down the line. Because I've bought watches in the past and worn them for a month and then they need service. And so it ends up incurring another five to $1,000, 500 to to $1,000 in service costs. Like I said, this one's coming up right now. This service is going to be about 250 bucks, along with the price of what the watch costs. So just keep that in mind and watch collecting that. If you're going to keep a watch, I don't really mind if somebody buys new, if it's a Grail watch, uh, something like this, um, Speed Speedmaster, um, you know, um, so try to buy either new or close to new and make sure, even if you do buy used, make sure you have the box and papers and all the service dates and who serviced it, and then that way you know what's going on with your watch. So I hope this was informative. It's Biggie. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day.